Hello everyone, welcome to Study IQ. So, in this session, we'll continue with economics. Uh, we have started off with uh, taxation. Okay, so we started with this module, taxation, and so far we have completed two lectures in this particular module. And in the first session, we have talked about the important terms related to taxes, where I have discussed about everything related to taxes like surcharge, cess, and all these concepts we have discussed over there. And in the second session, we talked about direct taxes and where we discussed about around 12 different types of direct taxes, which includes personal income tax, wealth tax, corporate income tax, MAT, AMT, okay, or the stamp duty, property tax and everything we actually covered over there. So if you have any doubts related to any of these topics, you can go back to the video and you can see that video or you can get in touch with me. This is my Instagram ID. We are going to do uh, indirect taxes today so indirect taxes is what we are going to do today now here uh, you already know that most of the major indirect taxes are actually merged into gst and gst is actually based on the concept of value added tax which is known as vat okay so what i'll do is uh, instead of going to gst directly we will be talking about the concepts related to indirect tax and the major concept that we need to discuss is actually vat so i'll explain you what is vat and uh, it is actually a ideal concept and it is very difficult to implement practically especially in developing countries so what i'll do is i'll talk about vat what is the idea of vat i'll give you some illustrations also that i have actually taken from ncrt and i've made some modifications and addition into that so we will discuss about that uh, a table i'll give you so that you can understand everything related to this value addition and how the value addition is taken into consideration while taxing and everything we'll discuss in detail and then we will talk about what are the advantages of vat and i've told you gst is based on the concept of vat so the advantages that we are talking about related to vat can be the same in case of gst also so gst will be easy for you then we'll talk about difficulties or the disadvantages or the problem in implementation of vat especially in developing countries we'll discuss and then we'll see a modified form of vat that we have actually introduced in 1996 uh, that is what we call as mod vat okay and it was renamed to send vat okay so all these things will be discussed in this particular session so this is our discussion on indirect taxes uh, i'll be taking two sessions for indirect taxes so in this session i'll be covering up to this and in the next session we will move on to discuss about gst in detail and i'll cover everything related to gst including the gst act and the features of act and everything will be covered in the next session so with these two sessions i hope we can complete indirect taxes and any questions related to indirect taxes like what we have done in case of direct taxes you will be in a, in a position to solve without any problems okay so after you complete the session uh, i can guarantee you i can promise you that you don't want to read any textbooks or anything apart from this not for this particular topic okay so we'll start the session and uh, we'll start off with value added tax okay so what so first let me write it down what is it okay what is it it is an indirect tax which is imposed on value addition in goods and services in each stage of economic activity so you can see here it is an indirect tax okay so indirect tax which is uh, imposed on value addition in goods and services at each stage so wherever value addition is happening in all these cases the tax will be imposed in each stage of the economic activity so it can be done at the stage of production and it can also be done at the sales stage okay so it can be done at production as well as sales stage now what do you mean by value addition value addition will be uh, it actually see you take the value of output minus value of input that is what the value addition so the raw material cost of this particular pen will be x okay and the cost of this pen will be y means the value addition is actually y minus x okay so value addition is actually the value of output minus value of 
input. So you take the value addition. That means uh, if a shopkeeper is buying an item, let's say at uh, seven rupee, and he is selling this at ten rupee. Okay, so he will be taxed for this three rupees. Okay, so this three rupee extra only. That is what we are actually talking about. So what is VAT? It is an indirect tax which is imposed on value addition in goods and services in each stage of economic activity. One more line that you can write is it replaces all domestic indirect taxes like excise. I'll be talking about these taxes in detail after some time. Excise tax where it is imposed. It is at the production stage and sales tax which which is at the sales stage and then service tax. Uh, which is on services because there is no separate production and uh, sales stage in case of uh, service because production you you are not producing a service and you are you are not saving it okay so for a long time to distribute that service later that is not actually happening the production and uh, distribution or, or the sale is actually happening at the same time so there is no separate tax it is only service tax so excise comma sales tax comma service tax and excise taxes on the production sales taxes on the sales so excise is actually majorly uh, it it was by the center and sales tax is actually by the state and how is it uh, changed in gst we will discuss in detail after some time service tax which is also a part of gst half will go to the center and half will go to the state okay so all these different components in gst will discuss so that you will understand it later so service tax etc because it is imposed on it is imposed on each stage of production and uh, distribution of goods and services so these are actually imposed at different stages so now it will be on the base of value addition so actually vat will replace all these taxes okay so that is the idea there is no need to have the separate taxations and that's the reason why you can see in gst all these are uh, coming together okay so gst is actually based on the concept of vat but vat completely you cannot implement there are some technical problems in implementation so that's why vat is actually an ideal concept okay and gst is based on vat so let's try to understand what is this value addition and how is it actually happening so one more point that you can write here is it is also called as multi point sales tax okay so also called as multi point sales tax okay because every cases of value addition it is taxed so it is a multi point sales tax and one more concept one more point that you can write here is it is actually a destination based uh, tax system destination based tax system so which among the following is correct with respect to indirect taxes or vat vat is a kind of indirect tax what what is a typical example of indirect tax what what is the ideal indirect tax okay so which among the following is correct with respect to vat you have to have clear idea about all these things and out of this this is very important it is a multi point sales tax it is based on uh, it is a destination based uh, tax system see now the question is uh, earlier there were many taxes right excise sales service tax etc is there now there is there will be only one that is vat because everything is actually replaced by vat now the question is whether the tax will decrease or increase see one thing that you need to understand is all these taxes at different stages there but it is done at the case of value addition and none of the taxes are actually removed these are all the taxes which are charged at different stages and that will be there in vat also so actually all the all the taxes are there uh, effectively only the name is changed so tax will remain the same okay the tax is not going to be reduced now let's take one example to understand this value addition i have taken this from ncert only so let me write a let me draw a table so that you just focus on this table you will understand all the concepts related to this value addition okay so we will talk about uh, different uh, stages we'll talk about producer side then we'll talk about the product okay we'll talk about input there is a column output okay then output minus input is your value addition okay and taxes on value addition is your value added tax and tax on the output that is actually on the sales 
or the, the the tax on the output that is the on the production that is your excise or sales tax okay so let's take different scenarios and we will see let's take uh, first stage okay let's talk about the case of a farmer okay who is producing wheat okay now uh, take the case that uh, he is having some cost of input let's say it is 10 okay 10 rupee or like that 10 and output let's say 30 so here you can see the value addition will be output minus input that is going to be 20 okay now if you if you take uh, uh, here if you take VAT let's say a 10 percentage if you calculate a 10 percentage uh, what is going to be the tax that you need to pay you will be paying 2 rupees because uh, this is 20 is the value addition 10 percent of 20 is 2 what about uh, excise excise or sales tax if you take a 10 percentage you have to pay it for output right not for value addition you have to pay it for the output 10 percentage of 30 so it is 3 okay now in the second stage what is actually happening is this farmer sold this wheat to a, a baker who's making a making or miller and uh, he is making flour out of it okay so it is going to a miller and uh, the output will be flour from the wheat flour and uh, the input cost was 30 right because uh, here this output output will become his input and uh, now he might have added some value and it became flour and the output cost will be total it will be 40 so effectively what is the value addition by the miller 40 minus 30 that is 10 now if we calculate VAT it is on this value addition so you have to pay 1 as a tax but if you calculate uh, on the output excise so 40 is the output now but remember this 40 involves 30 which is the input also and don't forget uh, i am just taking this as illustration purpose otherwise farmers don't pay vat okay farmers don't want to pay tax so uh, i i know that and here just for illustration purpose and for understanding purpose just i have taken this example so i am just uh, writing this tax here otherwise there is no tax okay so here the 30 rupee for that already tax is paid now you are paying tax again for entire 40 so it, that is why it is actually four okay so vat you need to pay one otherwise you need to pay on the entire output now this is actually this floor is now given to a baker who's making a cake okay so the product for him is actually cake now what is the input here you can see here this floor is the input so input cost is 40 now what is the cost of uh, output or the cake let's say it is 90 rupee so what is the value addition 90 minus 40 50 is the value addition so if you consider vat here uh, that is on value addition 10 percent that will be 5 but if you consider uh, uh, excise it will be 10 percent of 90 that is 9 okay then finally it will go to the shopkeeper okay so shopkeeper so he will be selling this and the input cost for him that price at which he got is actually 90 the cake cost is 90 he is selling it at 100 so what is the value addition if you see that is 10 rupee so he will be supposed to pay tax for this 10 rupee extra that is one uh, otherwise if you calculate on the production that is going to be 10 percent of 100 that is 10 okay now let's calculate this total here so let's make this table total input uh, input comes around uh, of the 130 this is 130 160 170 so 170 and output will be 260 and this is 90 okay value addition is 90 and this is 10 percent of 90 that is 9 this is 10 percent of 260 that is 26 so if it is VAT, you need to pay 9 rupees as the tax. If it is excise, you need to pay 26 as the tax. And that's the difference between value added tax and, you know, when you're imposing tax on the production or the product. 
okay final product let's uh, quickly discuss about the advantages of uh, vat and that will be the same in case of gst also so in the next module next session when i'm talking about gsd i will not be discussing about this i'll just refer it to uh, this vat only so that things will be clear i told you this is an ideal concept and this is the best concept so the first advantage is it reduces tax evasion okay it reduces tax evasion because uh, actually because uh, firstly it enables the tax official to cross check different uh, data given by different firms now firms cannot claim that uh, lower output or higher input nothing like that is possible because actually the tax officials can go and check at what price you sold or at what price you got so if he is selling if this person farmer is telling a lower amount the tax officials can actually cross check it with the miller and in the second case if the miller is giving a lower amount okay he can actually uh, the tax officials can actually cross check with the baker like that there will be a possible cross checking and the tax evasion actually can be minimized drastically so i'll write it down uh, tax officials can cross check easily so that is first thing secondly you know tax compliance will be increased in this case otherwise you can see here the tax burden on the firms is actually reducing right see here here you are paying 26 now you are paying 9 so actually tax burden is actually decreased so the voluntary compliance will increase so let me write it down effective tax burden on firms reduce so tax compliance increase okay voluntary tax compliance increase see the second advantage is you know if you are a firm you will be buying the inputs okay from the person who already paid taxes for their output because you will be getting exemption otherwise when you are going for paying taxes you have to pay it completely if you cannot claim that uh, the the if you cannot claim the taxes which is paid over the inputs you need to pay the entire tax so what you will automatically do you will only buy products from those people who actually paid taxes in their outputs so that means for your input you have already paid tax so you need to only pay for value addition okay so i'll write it down that point also it encourages firms to purchase input from those firms who paid tax who paid taxes to reduce their own tax liability okay so this is enough for you to understand this particular uh, idea so you will be buying things from those firms which pay taxes so that you can effectively reduce your own tax liability because you can claim the tax which is paid over the inputs and you just need to pay for the value addition let's suppose the input cost uh, 3 rupee and the output cost 6 rupee or 7 rupee you need to pay only for 4 rupee and not for 7 rupee okay now the third point and this is also one of the most important point it actually reduces the cascading burden different taxes you don't want to pay only one time you need to pay tax okay so it reduces or eliminates eliminates burden of multiple taxation why because each commodity will be taxed only once okay so there won't be a multiple taxation at the first stage will be taxed if you look here see here this three rupee this this 30 rupees taxed and which is coming as the input then this 40 rupees taxed actually in that 40 rupees the 30 rupees already taxed right now here you can see 100 rupees taxed but before 90 rupees actually taxed right this product is actually taxed for nine and you are paying tax again so the prices are going up and all these are actually a big problem so it eliminate the burden of multiple taxation because you will be paying tax only once the next point which i can tell is actually you know it imp it improves uh, the scope of specialization okay so it, it promotes specialization you know the reason it spe promotes specialization means i'm talking about division of labor or uh, different sections now in economics uh, you need to uh, go for division of labor or you need to go for specialization then the efficiency can be improved now here in this case what is the advantage how it is promoting specialization is because in each stage you are taxed right so you are taxed only for the value addition otherwise you know you can see here if the stages are going high and high more more and more stage you need to pay more and more tax right but here if it is based on the concept of vat 
you need to pay for only that value addition which is done in that particular stage so it doesn't matter how many stages are there in the production you can go for more efficiency and you can you can increase the number of stages that is not actually a problem in this case otherwise more the stages more tax you need to pay in case of excise or sales tax if you are going with okay so i hope that point is clear so it uh, promotes specialization okay because tax liability under vat is not affected by increase in number of stages okay otherwise if there if it is affected means uh, the final tax burden will be very high okay so here number of stages it doesn't matter so it improves efficiency so it improves efficiency the next point you can write is uh, actually it unifies in case of states okay so in case of states we can go for uh, it simplifies or unifies okay it unifies and uh, simplifies the indirect taxes so it unifies and simplifies the indirect taxation system across the states why because there is only one tax that is vat so we can write here it it will improve ease of doing business okay ease of doing business that is another advantage we are actually talking about advantage so whatever possible advantages is there we can write that so ease of doing business which reduce uh, compliance cost and promote investment okay promote investment so i hope these are clear for you now what else you can write as the advantage i can also say it will create a national market it creates a national mark or common market within the country by removing restrictions on movement of goods across the states okay so it actually promotes a national or common market because uh, now there is no restriction for movement of goods across the states N next uh, as a very important point again it enables i'll write it down it enables allocation of resources on the basis of comparative advantage i'll tell you what is this comparative advantage comparative advantage of various states or regions that is each state will produce the commodities which it can produce it can produce most efficiently okay so effectively it will increase the productivity and production at the national level now how, how is it actually going to happen so what do you mean by this comparative advantage this uh, uh, this comparative advantage see what is this point it enables allocation of resources on the basis of comparative advantage of various states or regions that is each state will produce the commodities which it can produce in a most efficient manner so let's suppose let's consider two states tamil nadu and kerala okay okay now here let's say cost of production cost of production is 9 rupee and in kerala it is 10 rupee now the tax in tamil nadu is 4 and uh, in kerala it is 1 so ultimate price will be the cost price plus taxes so this is 13 and this is 11 so where the cost is more the cost is more in tamil nadu where the most efficient form is located it is in tamil nadu because at 9 rupee tamil nadu can produce the same thing which is actually produced by kerala at the cost of 10 rupee but why the price in tamil nadu is more because of this tax in tamil nadu more the tax you need to pay more price so if it is coming under a unified tax if it is coming under vat what is actually going to happen tamil nadu who is the most efficient producer will get a comparative advantage okay so that's what you mean by this comparative advantage okay now you see now you will buy from where now you will buy from kerala why because you will have to pay 11 but who is the most efficient producer here it is tamil nadu who is the efficient producer i hope this point is clear now once the tax system is normalized then he the tamil nadu will get the benefit now what are the limitations so having done with this advantages we can now go for 
limitations of VAT. See, uh, actually, uh, the most important limitation is uh, basically it cannot be implemented in developing countries because of uh, lack of infrastructure, technology, software, things are not there. And, uh, you know, the records are not properly maintained. For this, if you need to go for claiming on the tax which is paid on inputs and everything, the proper records have to be maintained. So the sectors have to be organized. And all these are a big problem in case of countries like India who are on you know in the developing path okay so these are the major problems infrastructure technology softwares and the availability of proper records all these are the major problems in implementation of vat in developing countries knowledge is also one thing right when gst come see what is actually going to happen the price will increase or decrease when the common tax is there See, it has been told that in the beginning, the price will increase. Okay, price will increase, but later price will come down. How is it actually going to happen? Now, see, let's suppose this pen cost 10 rupee. Let's suppose this pen cost 10 rupee. And before uh, you need to pay excise tax or sales tax. Okay, let's say it is a 10 percentage you need to pay. Okay, so what, what will be the tax amount that you need to pay? 1 rupee and the price will be 11. Okay, now the pen cost same 10 rupee itself you need to pay let's say gst as 15 percentage so it will become 11.5 okay so actually the price you can see there is an increase the shopkeeper will tell that i am getting at 10 so i need to pay 10 percent tax in the first case so 11 now i need to pay 15 percent tax so it is 11.5 okay but here what is the flow what is the problem the problem here is if you look here this 10 involves taxes paid in the earlier stage also so that benefit has to be passed on to the customer and for that when we discuss about gst and the features of gst act i'll be talking about anti profiteering commission which will be taking care of all these issues okay so that we will discuss in detail in the next session so you'll understand it in a very detailed way uh, in case of economics i am going very slow and in a detailed explanation so that you don't want anything else to read for these particular topics okay and these are you know the lectures that you are getting once you pay very huge amount in the coaching classes but i don't think that you need to attend any session or any you don't want to read anything after understanding this particular session properly now let's move on to a modified form of vat which we have implemented that is mod vat mod vat it's actually modified vat only it was adopted in 1986 i think in the beginning i have told it as 1996 sorry so it was adopted in 1986 on the recommendation of L K J A committee. Okay, so 1986 on the recommendation of L K J A committee. Okay, so it was adopted by central government. So adopted by central government. So central government, which tax they were charging? It was it was excise, right? So excise on the production. So it is again on production. So it is by the central government. So it will be replacing what excise. Okay. So central government. So on production stage. So replaced excise. Okay. So production stage. So it replaced excise. So that has to be clear for you. Now why it was uh, only by center and why it is only on production. See, it was implemented by center and central government imposed this. Okay. And on production stage. What is the other stage? Sales stage. But as per constitution, sales tax is actually given to states. Okay. So, you know, uh, uh, if you need to amend that, the state permission is required and that's a big task. Okay. Huge task. So, government decided or government thought that initially they will try it at the production stage only. And then, then later, if it is good, we'll move on to the sales stage also. Okay. So, it was actually implemented at the production level by the central government and it replaced excise. Now, under mode VAT, under mod vat manufacturers i mean firms okay manufacturers have to pay taxes on the basis of their value of output so you see there is a practical problem in understanding every stage value addition so here what they are going to do is they are going to pay it on the value of output just like in the previous case normal case but what will actually happen is but 
the taxes paid on inputs can be offset either you will get offset uh, you just need to pay only for that uh, extra or it will be reimbursed later you can claim it back later okay so you will be paying it on output so let's suppose this pen cost 10 rupee you have to pay it for 10 rupee and if the raw material cost the input cost 5 rupee you can claim the tax which is paid for that 5 rupee later either it can be offset in the beginning itself when you are uh, paying the uh, tax itself or it can be reimbursed later that's what the concept of mod vat now if you go back to that previous table we can understand it in a much better way let me take it take that table so you have seen here let's take this last two columns you can see here uh, now what will be mod vat here let me draw one more column so mod vat will be uh, so you see here uh, output is 30 right but uh, there is no tax which is paid for input which is mentioned here so you have to pay for that entire 3 so it's actually 3 minus 0 which is 3 so there is no reduction there okay what about the second stage the output is 40 and the tax you paid is actually 4 so 4 is what you need to pay but you know you can reimburse the tax which you paid for input that is this 30 for this 30 you have already paid this 3 you remember this 3 you have already paid so you can go for this only 1 rupee now what about the next stage you can see here it is 9 so output is 90 so 9 is what you are supposed to pay but you can get reimbursement of how much uh, this input cost 4 right so this 4 you have already paid tax this 4 you have already paid tax so you can claim this 4 and you effectively need to pay 5 rupee similarly in the last stage you can see this is 100 is the output you have to pay for 100 so 100 means 10 rupee you need to pay as a tax 100 at 10 percent is 10 rupee minus what can be reimbursed input cost 90 so you can claim 9 rupee because this this uh, 9 uh, you already paid as tax right so you have already paid 9 here in the 3 stages as a tax so effectively you are paying 1 rupee this is the concept of mod vat so uh, you need to pay the uh, tax on the output but you can off you can get offset or you can get reimbursement for the taxes which is already paid on the input so it is actually not completely vat a uh, changed version of VAT, a modified form of VAT. I have told you VAT as such cannot be implemented in uh, societies like India, okay, or in developing countries where proper records and all are not maintained. I hope it is clear. See, uh, then VAT or mod VAT, which is better? See, mod VAT uh, is easy to implement, but it is very narrow. Why it is actually implemented or adopted only at the production level? And uh, I have told you not at the sales level because you need state permission and all and that's a big deal okay then in 2000 mod mod vat was renamed to senvat okay senvat means central vat okay so there is only a minor difference earlier there were three different tax rates were there eight percentage 16 percentage 24 percentage for different items three different tax rates were there now under senvat there is a uniform tax uniform tax of 16 percentage okay now those items where the government want to charge more or where the government want to charge more tax they are kept outside senvat like cigarettes and all okay now senvat is 12 percentage now it is also called as model rate okay model is coming from the word mode mode means actually most repeated numbers right when you talk about shoe size of students in the class mostly it will be eight okay eight inch okay so that's what mode okay so that's why it is known as model rate so i hope this discussion is clear for you if you have any doubt related to anything that we have discussed you can get in touch with me this is my instagram id i have this economic classes uh, sociology classes and uh, history i'll do uh, i have personal mentorship programs and test series you can get in touch with me for any help uh, for civil service examination so see you guys if you like the video give me a thumbs up if you have any doubts you can directly get in touch with me or you can comment below the video i'll try to answer that okay see you and in the next session i'll cover entire gst and associated concepts